All right, guys, welcome back. This is going to be a quick guide on how to get the Skyrim script extender running. Uh, this is a mod by Ian Pedersen. You can see all the names up here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to search SKSE download. That's like such a tongue twister on Google. And that's how you'll find that guy. And then you just want to go to the one that's silverlock.org because all the other websites may not be the direct download. So he has three builds on the site. You got the classic normal version of Skyrim. You got the special edition version of Skyrim. And you got the VR. Uh, I am going to grab the uh, one right here. Make sure you have a tool to unzip. Or else this will be annoying because these are all zip files. So grab that right there. We're going to click it. It starts to download. It's super quick. And once you have that. You can show it in folder here. You see I already did one earlier, so I'm just going to delete that one. I don't need two of them. You can see we're going to take this one. We're going to copy. And we want to go into um, our folder where our Skyrim EXE is located. The easiest way to do that is open up Steam or whichever program you have that installs it. Uh, I'm just going to use Steam as an example. You right click on it on the left side here on Steam. Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files, and you get brought to right where the EXE is. Then you could paste what you copied, and you can see I already have one in here. So I can just say replace, there it is. And then you can say extract. I have seven zip installed, um, but you are going to want to extract it. I extracted it to the folder SKSE. That way I can just go into the folder. I have the folder as a backup, and I can just copy everything in this folder, go back to the main folder with the exe, and paste everything. You want the exe and the dll, everything that's in this folder to be in the exact same folder as the exe. If you don't, it won't work. So now that you've gone that in there, we can move on to uh, the part where you get it running on Steam. So you can see I already have a page here. That'll actually just run that exe because this uh, guy in the folder here. Oh, it's not going to come back up. Boom. I'll tab that sucker. So this guy right here is where we're going to be running the game from now on. If you run the game from the normal exe, your mods won't work. So we want to make sure that Steam has this going. Uh, I create another one. You can point the normal Skyrim to that exe. But then if you uninstall it later on or something else, that, of course, will not work until you fix it. So I just go add game, add non-Steam game, browse, and it's going to automatically bring me back into this folder. But if you don't know the path, it's your install drive, Steam, Steam apps, common, Garden Special Edition. Uh, this is what happens when you install it on a non-main drive. If it was on the main drive, we go in here. We'd probably go programs 86. And then we'd see a folder called Steam. We go Steam Apps, Common. And you can see these are the ones I have just on the normal drive. But that is how you would get there normally, so to say. But we want the SKSE. So we go all the way back here. We click on the SKSE open you can see it gets added to a list we say add selected program it'll go through the process of actually adding it uh, so now you can see i have one here just named that and i'm just gonna quickly uh you can see you can change the name here you can choose the icon all that stuff in here uh so that's where you'd go to do what i did to make it sort of look more clean uh we're gonna remove that so it's not in the way so now that you've gotten it on Steam set up ready to go, we are going to need the fixes to get this bad boy actually up and running. So we're going to go back and we're going to go to Nexus. I'm going to have both these links in the description, by the way. So you come into Nexus, uh, back to files. So there's two files for the Skyrim script extender engine fixes. There's part one and part two. Part one, install with the mod manager. Get that up and going in your vortex. Go into mods. You can see I already have it in here. I just have to find it wherever the heck it is. It's a little bit tricky to find. 
there it is. Just because it's called Part 1 Engine Fixes, you can see I I did not read what I should have read, and I uninstalled it, so it is in here, but you want to make sure this is installed, enabled, and up and running by the time you get to Part 2. Part 2, uh, it cannot be installed with the mod manager. As you can see, I did not read the instructions, and it didn't mess anything up. It just meant I uninstalled it, and I wasted some time. This button on the left is a lie. Do not use it. Manual install, this is the exact same as uh, the Skyrim script extender where you want this file to be unzipped and all the contents of that folder to be in the same folder as your exe in Skyrim. What I'd recommend, uh, if you noticed, we're going to need to go back to the Skyrim folder a lot. So when you get to the Skyrim exe folder the first time, or if you're doing it again now, where the Skyrim XC is, you can go Steam, Browse, Local Files, through the properties. You can basically right click your desktop, say New Shortcut, and then you can just put in the path we copied right there, and that will give you a shortcut straight to where the EXE is located, so you don't have to go through all the folders every time. That way, you can get the Part 2 engine fixes. You can drop that sucker in here, you can extract it. It'll extract all its stuff it needs to. And once you get that done, you can now go into Steam, wherever you have your SKASE launcher title or name, you can click play and it'll run Skyrim with the SKSE installed. Uh, there's some things to note. Uh, say we click manual download on this. We do need the address library. Uh, you're going to want the all in one for that. That one's pretty normal standard uh, mod installation. And you're going to want this. Uh, once you get this, it's pretty simple. You just go to Microsoft's webpage through the link here, and you always want the 64 if you don't know which version to get. 64 by default, especially if you're on Windows 10. Windows 10 is locked in on 64 architecture. So once you get both those installed, then you can finish up and have everything going. But you're going to basically make sure you even get, before you even get this file, you have to go through and do those two. I'll also show you just what the address library looks like. You just go files and then all in one mod manager install. And it's pretty easy uh, to do compared to the S key. Yeah, I mean, lose my mind saying this SKSE install uh, thing. If you have any issues, they do in the download page link a video. They also tell you compatibility, how to contact them if you're a modder, other things like that. If you're interested, so that should be how to get your SKSE running. Uh, for me personally, SKSE in my mod list uh, runs the Sky UI as one of the most important things. With the Sky UI, you get access to the MCM menu, which basically allows you to control stuff like realistic water, uh, the enhanced blood textures, things like that to have things, vivid weathers, all those. I can balance through my Sky UI, and if you're running PC, it's basically like just a must for a mod. So, with that, I will include all the stuff I need to in the description. I hope you found this guide useful. I really do, no matter what modding you're doing, even if you're not going to use the SKSE, make a, make a shortcut to your Skyrim Special Edition folder or your Skyrim folder for that EXE. You will be coming back here a lot. You can see I have two other tools here that I had to do, and usually I just run these tools from here. Uh, there are, of course, you can make short links and shortcuts to clicking this without it, but like I said, just coming back here is so nice. You might run into a bug, a glitch with your mods, and you might want to go, oh, I need to right-click the EXE, run as administrator, or something like that, just to see what's going on. So really recommended to do that. I also really recommend putting it in to your Steam folder if you're using Steam. That way you don't have to go every time. Okay, let me go find the EXE, click play. You can just, like you would normally do, open up Steam and run it. So, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you found this guide useful. If you have any questions or anything you want to ask, feel free in the comments. And if you have any guides you want me to cover in the future, just let me know. I'm down for really covering anything.